Hello, 11th grade. It is hard to believe, but we are already done with another whole decade. So today we are going to review the 1930s, look at the effects of the New Deal and how all that shook out, uh, quickly review our cause and effect chain of how did all this crazy stuff happen, and then wrap it up with you uh, researching a little more into whatever you're most interested in. I want to give you as much time as possible, so we're going to jump right into all this. I do want to take a second and remind us that people are never one-dimensional, though. When we talk about the 1930s, we only talk about it, usually as the Great Depression. We only talk about it as a time of unemployment, starvation, homelessness, despair. Um, and we have that single story, that one image of it. But I want you to keep in mind that that one story is never the whole story. It's always just one side. Uh, and that's true when you're thinking about individual people, when you're thinking about the people sitting around you. That's also true of when we study historical eras, places, peoples. So I wanted to give us a break for a second and talk about some of the awesome stuff in the 1930s. We discovered Pluto. We made the first DPT vaccine. Uh, science fiction and comic books exploded as genres. Um, some of the most famous movies still in existence were from the 1930s. Same with some Broadway shows. Um, so there was still a lot of great things going on and people creating and people being crazy dorks just like they are now. Um, and I think that makes talking about what happened in this time period even more interesting and phenomenal because the people in it were not solely, only worried about whatever was going on with the Great Depression and the big economy any more than that's what you are 100% of the time concerned with. Um, there's still so much more in the world at any given time. But now that we've had just like a speck of happiness, I'm going to rain on our parade again and we're going to review uh, the big stuff, the Great Depression. Sorry, y'all. Um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video a couple times in here and discuss with your classmates and then we'll come back together. So we're looking at causes and effects. Uh, this is stuff from last week, so just to refresh our memory. Uh, some causes of the Great Depression included agricultural oversupply, included buying on credit, and included stock speculation. In just a moment, I want you to pause this video and see if you can remember how is it that each of those three things caused the Great Depression. So, pause. And back together, thank you. Um, how did it all go wrong? Agricultural oversupply is going to lead to the prices dropping. Um, just laws of supply and demand, when you have too much supply, your prices are going to go down. But because prices are going down, farmers are going to default on their loans. And other people begin to default on their loans as well, because just like we learned in our uh, simulation, what one person does affects what other people do. So people start defaulting on their loans, and ultimately, the bubble crashes. When people say the bubble, they're referring to money that was promised, but that never really existed. When you buy something on credit, that money doesn't exist yet. You are promising that it will exist in the future. And when you buy stocks at one price, you are buying that on the assumption that the prices will stay the same or go up in the future. Um, 
And when people lose trust in the future and it all falls apart very quickly, that's how we end up at the Great Depression. So that's how all the bad stuff happened originally. Next step in review. The president at the time when it all went wrong was Herbert Hoover. And we talked about three things that he attempted to solve the Great Depression. And those three things he attempted were volunteerism, localism, and trickle-down economics. Um, none of those ended up being enough to solve the Great Depression. It happened anyway. Um, so in just a second, I want you to pause this video and say, what were these policies and why did they fail? Give yourself a couple minutes. All right, back. Um, the thing about asking the wealthy to give their money to the poor of their own free will is the wealthy were also panicking at this time. Um, so they are also going to be holding on to their money because they're afraid it's all going to go away tomorrow. Uh, so the wealthy are not volunteering, which makes volunteerism impossible. Localism, the idea that local governments should take care of their communities and not the federal government. Um, that's a great idea up until the local governments can't pay for the needs of their community, which most taxes always go to the state and federal level. The local governments didn't have enough money to deal with this crisis. So volunteerism fails, localism fails. Trickle-down economics means when you give money or loan money to the people at the top, uh, to big businesses, to big banks, on the assumption that if you give money to the people at the top, it will trickle down to the people below. Uh, because then the rich folk can afford to employ more people, um, start new businesses, give out more loans. But if you remember the panic at the time, um, the money that was given to the top stayed at the top, and it ended up mostly being a waste of money on the government's part. And so Hoover gets voted out of office because so many things go wrong in his presidency. And then we elect this FDR fellow. And he comes in with this idea of the New Deal. He has a lot of problems to address. He admits that up front. And here are just a couple of those problems. Unemployment, lack of trust in banks and business, and then also a lack of trust in the government. So for the final third time, I'm going to ask you to pause this video and see what you can remember about these problems and how were they solved. So pause. All right, welcome back. Good job, I'm sure. Um, some of those solutions. He helped solve unemployment by creating so many new government job opportunities um, through the entire alphabet organization system. The TVA, the CCC, the PWA, the WPA, the, and it goes on and on. Um, with the idea that eh, the government doesn't actually have money to pay these people right on hand. They're also using money on credit to pay these people. But if we get some money back into the economy um, and the people at the bottom have enough money to actually buy goods and go out and shop and feed their children, then that will fix the economy and, and then the government can pay back its money. So we solved unemployment by having the government actually create more jobs. We, lose, we lost trust in banks, so the FDIC insures them. If you have a bank account, it probably has a stamp somewhere in your paperwork that says FDIC insured. And what that means is if your bank fails tomorrow, if they go out of business, um, then all your money doesn't just disappear. If you're FDIC insured, then every 
person with an account at the bank, the government has insured their money up to $250,000. Now, the point of this is that if people know their money is safe up to the $250,000, um, then they are less likely to panic and go withdraw a bunch of money, which is what makes the banks actually fail in the first place. So the FDIC is there saying, if the bank fails, we'll cover it. Don't withdraw all your money at once and make the bank fail anyway. Um, and that restores a lot of trust to help the banking system start working again. And then lastly, the lack of trust in government some of that just takes time. It takes time for all these programs to start working, and that's going to restore public trust all on its own. Um, but also, FDR was a new kind of president, very hands-on, um, very much wanted to communicate directly with the citizens through his fireside chats. Um, the public works were benefiting everyone on top of the economic benefits. They were just there to do things for the public good. So that went a long way toward restoring the public faith in government, which is how FDR got elected four times. However, the New Deal did also cause some problems like we um, read about yesterday. We are still arguing about how much uh, welfare agencies are government overreach. Is it the government's job or not to make sure people get fed, to make sure people have housing and health care and education? At what point is the government stepping in too much? We are still arguing about that, I guarantee, right this second in Congress. Um, and a lot of those organizations that we're still arguing about came from the New Deal era. So that's one problem it caused. The other problem it almost caused is called court packing. And that was the judicial branch didn't agree with the executive branch on how much of the New Deal was legal. They were already arguing about the government overreach. And... FDR, who was super popular by now, threatened to pack the Supreme Court to take it from nine people up to 15 people uh, on the assumption that those all those extra people would be voting in his favor because he would be appointing them. So to make the court bigger so that he could pass things without um, without so much oversight. Thankfully, that did not come to be. I say thankfully because it definitely would have, uh, oh, sorry, would have interfered with our checks and balances system. But that one didn't actually come to pass. The government overreach problem we're still struggling with. Ah, before we move on, I just wanted to take a second and look at talking about all those jobs that were created. This is just one alphabet organization. This is just the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps. And this is just everything they did in Washington State. So this one organization that existed just for the 30s and 40s, really, when they did all this stuff, um, did dozens of projects across the Pacific Northwest. In fact, if you have been to a state park in Washington State, you have probably been on a trail that was made by the CCC. Um, so, hey, that's cool. Let's get to your actual assignment for the day. Um, we're on Chapter 22, Section 3. First thing, I just want you to type your notes. And then in two and three here, you are picking some of your own research topics. Um, so choose one of the groups of people talked about in um, chapter 22, section three, research more, research more on the CCC and PWA, 
all of this is on power school um and email me if you have any questions and i will